Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on this week's Master Nightfall, which is Scarlet Keep. Uh, this is my first guide for Season 19, which is Season of the Surf. Feels good to be back doing another Nightfall on Destiny. It's been a while. Uh, I'm not going to really talk too much about what I've been doing or where I've been. We'll do that in a separate thing, but for now, I'm going to talk about the run. Maybe, hopefully, give you guys some tips to make this a little bit easier for, you, for your runs. So if you're interested in seeing the full, the full setup, it will be at the end of the video. But suffice to say, I'm using Weatherhorde in my primary. I'm using Tripwire Canary, which is the new Arc Bowl, for the new Seraph Bowl. And I'm using uh, Fixed Odds, which is a drop from the Duality Dungeon. It originally was the Menagerie uh, Machine Gun. It's solar, so I, what, the reason why I went with the Tripwire, you don't have to use the, the, the Arc Bowl that I'm using. I just wanted an arc weapon and I wanted a solo weapon and I figured I wanted my arc weapon to be not to be running out of uh, ammunition because of all the arc knights. So as you see there we have uh, the, the new reprised version of Breaching Clear for the grenade launcher hence why I am using Weatherboard. So basically what this does, it weakens the enemy, it does apply a, 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 a debuff to the enemy where you can do more damage. And the Weather Horde, although it's been nerfed, it's still really good, it just, the, 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 it lasts on the floor for a, a less time than it did before. But it seems like the, the burn or debuff lasts quite long, so uh, my bow has Frenzy on it, you'll see it on the left, I've got Archer's Temple and Frenzy on it. I think I've got Kellen Tally and Feeding Frenzy on my fixed odds. So what I've went with here is I've coupled a couple of the seasonal mods together. There's basically is one that makes you charge like every time you stun a champion. So I've put high energy fire on fire on to, to go with that. So every time we stun a champion, we're gonna do 20% more damage. And then we're also doing more damage because of this debuff. This uh breaching clear, but I, I don't think it's called breaching clear. Uh, the game, listen, the game is down at the moment, so I can't actually see, uh, it's down for maintenance, so I can't actually see the mods. I normally have them up on the screen so that I can just call them quickly. Uh, but it's it's three energy, it can go on every piece of armour. Every time you stun a champion, you get, uh, every time you stun a champion, you get charge for light. So, high energy fire is perfect for it. I've also got a solo operative which affords you a 15% damage boost if you're solo. Very, very good. The the, the breach and it's not called breaching clear. It's starting to annoy me because I can't remember what it's called. Uh, off the top of my head, obviously, when I get back in the game, I'll know exactly what it's called. Uh, so, this is this area that we're in at the moment. This is the first real encounter in this nightfall. And the idea is, which I'm sure most of you will know, uh, but just for, just for people that might not, uh, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. What this uh, section is, you have to get two orbs and you've got to put them in their respective holders to get the bridge to come down. Now you have a whole host of enemies. As you would have seen, we've already took the champion. There is a champion once you, once you take down the wizard in each tower. You will then get a champion on your way back to the centre section. I actually was going to put the, the weather horde on the, on the wizard. Uh, but because... Now, again, I'm sure all of you are aware of this. I'm just saying it for... You know, it's one of them I can say, well, I did say. Uh, what, what, what this is... The modifiers... You get one modifier that switches uh, day to day after reset. The modifier now, basically, all the thrall in here are going to be invisible when, until they get close to me. So there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, cursed thrall, exploding thrall, that are going to be invisible after I get the second orb. So this first orb, so we're doing it right then left. It doesn't matter which way you do it. When you do one side, you'll see there, there's my champion. So I've took the higher ground, it makes the, uh, it, 
just makes makes me a harder target for the ads to hit. So what I'm going to do is, you see there I've got charge for light, I'm just going to drop a Wither Horde on this champion. You see, that's some meltage. When you take it, that it's arc burn, so you're doing 25% additional arc damage, uh, you take 50% more from any arc source. But my heavy is solar. If I'd, if I'd have done it the other way and used an arc bow, a solar bow and an arc heavy, well, I'd have melted them 25% faster. But as you can see, it's not really needed. Now you see there, there's a throw, and there'll be a bunch coming up now. I've just put a weather horde down. Now, the weather horde only lasts, like I said, four seconds, so really got to be careful when you're putting it down. But you that, that'll give you an idea. Just looking at those thrall there, that's that's what you're going to be coming up against. They're going to be invisible until they get really close to you. So, when you get the first orb, basically, you get the first orb, all good. Uh, you've got a champion all the way back to the center section, then you slam that orb. Once you get the second orb, you're still going to get the champion, but in the center, there's going to be a bunch of invisible thrall. Now, what you're going to see me do is once once I get once I get the orb and I've slammed it, I'm still going to look around because for the next section coming up, we're going to be in the middle section, and the the thrall that are there are or uh, curse throw, as I've already said. So, if one of them's hiding, and I'm in gate, and, and obviously doesn't, well, I say obviously, chaff is on, so they're on. There is no radar, so I don't even get a chance to see them coming up, which is why I took it a little bit, a little bit uh, more. It was a little bit more relaxed. Now, what I'm doing is I'm dropping this orb so I can fire, and periodically picking it up just to refresh the timer on it. I'll just see if we can get, bring that right up to top. You see, what happens with the Wither Horde when you're applying this buff? You want it on him, you want it to hit him, but if he walks through, I'm just putting that Wither, wither Horde down because you see, I can see the curse throw. Uh, yeah, just behind him, there's more coming in behind him. So now what I'll do is I'll just switch between targets. Uh, when he walks through the Wither Horde, it will there's one there. It will apply the the debuff to him. The debuff doesn't just weaken him; it slows him. It, it it's almost a suppressor. Almost. I don't know if it can bring things out of their abilities <laughs> like a normal, like a suppressant grenade. But the when when you get when you get your first one. When you get your first orb, it's all good. You can just, you know, come forward, be careful for the champion, a couple of ads. It's the second orb. You have to be very careful with the second orb. Because, like I say, you're going to be greeted with some very unfriendly... Just attach another one. Uh, very unfriendly uh, curse throw, which, yeah, they'll, they'll just explode on top of you. So, we've got anti-barrier bow. And we've got overload grenade launcher. Now, the grenade launcher, when you pull your grenade launcher out, you'll see there you get three seconds of unstop. So don't be standing with your grenade launcher ready to stop an unstoppable. You've got three seconds. So kind of store your grenade launcher until you need it. <clears throat> now, another great thing about going with the bow is there's a lot of instances in this nightfall where you can actually really do yourself, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of favors here by attacking everything from range as much as possible. Range is safety. Just think of it like that. It's it's nothing else. You'll get people that will be charging through these things. I'm personally I'm just not a fan of running through things at, at high speed. I I I, I feel like. It's, it's just, it's not a repeatable strategy when you're learning a nightfall. So, if you guys, any of you guys speed run these types of things, then definitely, you know, I'm, I'm, I personally don't like it, but, you know, all the best to you guys if you, you know, if that's what you're doing. Another, <clears throat> another thing that's worthwhile speaking about is, uh, or mentioning, is the nightfall weapon this week 
as the pulse rifle. Man, that just went out my head. I literally just had it. We'll get that. There is only one pulse, pulse rifle, I think. So, uh, the Dreaming City pulse rifle. It'll come back to me. almost had it again. Uh, I, again, uh, haven't really found something where I'm like, yeah. That's that's the pulse rifle for this. Horrors least. I knew it would come back. I haven't found an instance yet where where Horrors Least has been. This is the only thing that's going to do the job. I haven't found anything yet like that. If you have, brilliant. It's doing more for you than it will be for me. I personally am looking forward to uh, seeing what we can get on the new Nightfall weapon. Uh, I say the new one because there are two. Uh, and we've already had Hung Jury. So, if you don't have a good Adept Hung Jury, this is your season. Uh, and Wendigo is obviously a grenade launcher, which used to have blinding grenades and explosive light. Be interesting to see what you can get on it now, but uh, anyway. Horrors Least is the weapon that's dropping this week. Uh, what you'll have seen me do there is once I cleared all the ads on the on this bridge, had a champion. I try and get the champion out the way first, but don't go out of your way to do that. You know, don't you know arc damage, 25% more damage from, from arc sources. I have to tell you, those knights, they sting. Don't don't you know, be careful when it comes to those knights because just like wizards, what wizards just always seem to when when they beam you, when they when they when they get their their sights on you, they always seem to fire just a touch longer than you expected them to. And you know, it doesn't matter you, 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 half the time you can't get out of the way of the shot. So don't just don't put yourself in that position in the first place. Uh when you come up the stairs to the part we just done. There will be uh, two acolytes to start with. When you kill one of them, half the time, the other one will teleport up to his mate. So if it's not a bug, it's not all oh, my games lagging. I'm just making you guys aware that that will happen. So when you get here, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that there are snowballs because we have the dawning. Uh, don't, don't be thinking that your game's lagging or whatever, or, you know, that is just the way it is. Uh, I like to take this champion here. I like to take him before he can run away, because if he runs away, it's not much more difficult, but it's easier to take him from that high ground, because he'll run down to here where we are now. So this next section is probably the, the second big mechanical part. There's three plates to capture. Uh, once you run over the first plate, you can see I've just completely bypassed uh, trying to do anything on that plate, but I'm not going to go back on the plate. Once you touch the plate, you get this wizard, and then, and then you get a whole bunch of acolytes coming from left and right. What I do personally, now, again, you can multitask, you can, you know, capture the plate, do all sorts of things, juggle, uh, make a sandwich, whatever you want to do, whilst also taking the plate. I prefer to do things safely. So you see now, I know that nearly all the ads are dead, Apart from that one guy. So now I'm going to capture this middle plate. Once you've captured the middle plate, you then get your champion. And that is the barrier champion. There are three champions, one for each of the plates. But as you can see, I'm just trying to take these snipers because the snipers hurt. But I'm not, you know, I'm not committing. And the reason why I'm not committing is because they're a bunch of thrall and they're invisible. There we go. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, there are a bunch of thrall that come from left, a bunch of thrall that come from mid, and a bunch of thrall that come from right. Now what I think happened here was the ads never pushed up to because it can obviously just come from left and right. If you push up these stairs though, then you, you, you stand a chance of getting some of them from the mid. That's what normally happens to me. So we're just going to... I'm pretty sure they're all gone. If they're not, there'll be one left. So I'll just break this guy's shield. I've got my charge to the light. Melting down with the machine gun. And there we go. 
So you'll see there it says pursue hash Ladoon, daughter of Crota, alt has captured one. Keep an eye on that because people, the amount of times I've, there's, I, knew, I knew there was one more. The amount of times I've done this and people have ran away from their plate because they've killed the wizard or done whatever. But they haven't actually captured the plate. Make sure you've captured your plate. I'm just trying to see there. It, it does weaken them quite a bit. But it also does a fair amount of damage when you put the weather horde. So just remember your reticle is in the same place regardless of what weapon you use. So if you've got your machine gun reticle on on the wizard, switch to your weather horde and, and, and you'll, you'll be aiming at the wizard. So once you capture so much of the plate, you'll get, and this works for left and right plates, once you capture so much of the plate, you'll get adds from left and right, two acolytes from left and two from your right hand side, and then you'll get a champion at the top of the stairs, a barrier champion. And then go back on the plate, capture it. Jobs are good. And at the start, you'd have seen, when we took the middle plate, I put a couple of weather hordes up to where the champion was. That took, that kind of dealt with the snipers. I'm just looking, making sure there's no other ads floating about. That dealt with the, because there's a couple of acolyte snipers that, that, that kind of come with. Uh, I'm just going to melt, melt this wizard down. Finish up to finish her with the bow. Uh, there's a couple of uh, void sniper acolytes that come with the first champion. The weather horde, <clears throat> the weather horde dealt with all of those ads, so I didn't have to then go hunting more ads. So here we are. We've took that. Then we took mid. We've just took right. Now we're on left, and it's the same thing. We're going to get two acolytes left, two acolytes right, and a champion up mid. And I'm just, if you use the top of the stairs to head glitch, his blasts will hit the top step and won't hit you. I'll put another, there we go. Now, because I've done so much damage and Witherhorn's biting away at him, I don't have to waste any more heavy. Now, long time viewers of the channel will remember me saying this. I haven't said it for a long time. Manage your heavy. Right? I've got 96. I'll need to keep... I, I went with a solar machine gun because wizard, the wizard shields are solar. Now, I have machine gun, ammo finder, and scavenger on. Weather horde being an exotic, even though it takes energy, it's in the kinetic slot. Primary slot, but it takes energy and ammo. So, weather horde will help me drop more heavy than a legendary would because exotic primaries drop more heavy from ammo finders. So... That's that's that second mechanic done. No, no, it's a bit of a kind of, kind of, a little bit of a battle to get to the third main mechanic. There we go. As you can see, I've got. Although that wasn't Weatherboard, I don't think. I'll just put that there. But he teleported. That champion will always teleport. If you don't get, even if you get hits on him, he'll still teleport over to where that sniper was. See him there, just at the top. And we'll just toss that on him, which, which, even though it never stuck him, I never stuck him, we still got that weakening kind of effect on him. I'm trying to keep a hold of Heavy. There you go. And now, now th this section is not really difficult, this section. You're going to have a whole bunch of Acolytes. You're going to have some Thrall. But you're going to have, what, before you get to lift three champions. And you're going to have, I'll just put that at the top. And you're going to have your uh, Shrieker. Now, as you can see, still got more to come. Uh, Weather Horde, because it doesn't last very long, it was gone before they got to the top of the stairs. So be, be careful with that. A really bad Weather Horde shot. Trying to just get one up there and suppress the champion. You see, got him there. That was actually a really good shot that I did not mean because I bounced it and when I fired it, now you'd have seen that there, <clears throat> when I fired the Wither Horde, the, the, the champion even though it never hit him, the minute I fired, he was off. <clears throat> he was dodging out the way. This is the part here you've got to be careful of. More than 
most of the kind of because this isn't really a, this isn't really what I would call. I mean, this is just fight your way to the, the lift, really. But because there's so many snipers, if two or three of these snipers all peg you, even you know <clears throat> you can survive one shot. But if, if all three of them peg you, if three of them peg you at the same time, oh man, it's over. So just like what I done with the last shrieker. I'm going to try and Colby a shot onto the Shrieker. So just line it up. There we go. Now I can push down to this barrier. You can see there the Weather Horde not only is damaging the Shrieker, but has weakened it enough that I can melt it with, with my fixed odds. Really ambitious Weather Horde there. But as you can see, sometimes it's worth taking a pop. Because we done the same thing. We uh, bounced the shot. So hopefully we're going to get the one time melt. There we go. <clears throat> go back and get some heavy. And we've got another champion at the top of the stairs. And then we're on to the lift. Now. What I used to do with this lift. Well I say what I used to do. What I have done. And probably would do again for the GM or whatever. Is there is, there is an emote that allows you to emote into the lift. Now it's worthwhile mentioning that the Master Nightfall is obviously 1610. There aren't going to be many of us over level, if anyone. And there probably will be some PC gamer uh, macroing the life out of his mouth. Uh, there won't be many people who are going to be on a par with this. So, kind of have to take a little bit more precaution. It's not quite GM, because you're 25 levels below a GM. I'm 10 levels below this. So, instead, what I normally, or have done, uh, is I just emo into one of these pillars, and I'm, and I'm good. But I wanted to do this legitimately, and show you guys what I look for legitimately. Now, I'm looking at these alcoves. You can see how they're all closed up. <clears throat> this is the side I need to be on. You'll always have maybe one one that can actually reach you, but not to the point where it's going to melt you. Stay behind. Stay behind the plat the, the pillar where all, where all the alcoves are closed up. And then this six, this is first floor. So first floor is barriers. You're going to have uh, a couple of barriers. See, there's one. Break his shield, and then we'll try and get a weather horde on him, and then melt him down with the machine gun. I thought I'd be able to just melt him out there. Just hit him again with weather. I'm, I'm not going to waste any more heavy. Should be able to just take him down with the bow and the weather horde. So, what you'll have here is you'll have a wave of acolytes that will come out from each each side. And a barrier with each one of them, right? And there will be one wizard in the center. See there? I'm just trying to take a couple of the acolytes. I'm not really too bothered. Right there, I wasn't too bothered about the barrier or the wizard. I just wanted to take some of the acolytes because they are throwing those uh, solar bombs. And I think the modifier today is they throw more of them. I am using Lowerly Splendor on the Solar Titan as well. Uh, I, don't, I don't really want to speak too much about my loadout because... Uh, let me just break his shield because that's at the end of the video. You can, guys can go and check that out all you want. Now, as you can see, I'm really trying to cut double down on damage on the champions. I am getting charged with light. I am doing more damage because of uh, Solar Operative. Uh, I, I have got high energy fire on so when I'm breaking breaking the shield I'm gonna do more. Just gonna if I can get away with not using heavy because I want to keep keep heavy for uh, as much for the boss because I don't want to rely on having needing to get heavy on any of these platforms. I'm obviously gonna get some but I don't want to rely on. So again once you take that wizard the crystal on the left will become unshielded. You see, I'm doing the same thing again. I'm trying to look to see which sections are open. Uh, they seem closed. So, I'm going to go here. Uh, 
they're open at the top. Yep, we're on the right side. All, my, all, the, all the ones behind me are closed. Uh, once you've took, well, you know you when you've took all the enemies because the crystal will become unshielded. That's on the left. Shoot the crystal onto the left, up to the next floor. It's the second floor. Here we're going to have an unstoppable ogre, and then uh, there's going to be a wizard on each side with some acolytes. So again, you see there, I kept, kept my, uh, I kept my grenade launcher sheet, uh, sheathed. Is that the right word? I don't even sound right. Holstered. There we go. <laughs> Sheath. That's a knife. <laughs> uh, come to a gunfight. <laughs> Bringing a knife to a gunfight there. Uh, yeah, so same thing with, with, with uh, the Unstoppable. Once, once, keep your uh, keep your grenade launcher holstered uh, until you need to stop the Unstoppable. And you can see was going to the right hand side, the side behind us now. You will take if there's any acolytes get 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 a look at you, you will take damage from behind. So I just disengaged and uh, went and killed those guys. So I can, so I I can focus on this wizard without without uh, any distractions from behind. So that's one wizard. So we might have some acolytes over on the other side and a, and a wizard, and then that's us up to the boss. So let's talk a little bit about the boss. Uh, Hashla Dune. At a certain point, she's got three damage, but she's got three health bars. And at certain points through the health bar, she will call in reinforcements. So what to expect in the first health bar are Arc Knights, which you probably get with most of the waves anyway. So Arc Knights, Acolytes, Thrall, Wizards. Second, one, that's when you get to her first health bar. Her second health bar, from, from the end of her first to the end of her second, that's when you're going to get your champions. You're going to get two overloads or come out at the same, uh, two unstoppables. I hope I haven't been saying overloads this whole time. You guys know it's unstoppable, right? You guys keep me right. Uh, you'll be getting on two unstoppables. Now we are going to utilize utilize a uh, uh, king of I wouldn't say cheese spot because you can die, get hit from there very easily. We are going to be utilizing kind of one of the rare pieces of uh, cover in this nightfall when we need to. Now arc damage is increased 20 50 percent, so. Uh, as you can see there, you've got to be really careful with wizards because I think I miss a lot of other board here. It's really, sometimes it can be really difficult to hit these uh, these wizards. So here we go. We've got there. We go. Already had the reticle, but just just wanted to check. I don't want. I know I'm going to have to use some uh, some heavy used a lot more heavy than I wanted to use because I have to keep breaking breaking these wizard shields. I think I've got yeah there we go. So once you take these wizards down, Hashladun's gonna come out. You know, I'm just gonna nip over and make sure because I've only got a love and special and they, nine times out of ten those wizards drop special. So as soon as her shield comes off, I'm gonna hit her. And you see there I got her with Wither Horde and then I've thrown a grenade on her. I'm not just going to go straight into cover. I'm going to try and take out some of these Thrall. The thrall can be an absolute nightmare. So once you see there, I'm just having a look to see what's about. Yep, here they are. So I'm going to put that down there. Because I wanted the Thrall to come back. Those Thrall, the reason why I'm... I'm, I'm Really thinking about those thrallers. If the thrall are allowed to sprint, I'm trying to hit Hatch doing from here, just keep the damage going on her. If the thrall are allowed to sprint from the starting position right over here, they'll just run right over the top, right into you, and push you right off. No, I don't care what anybody says, it hasn't happened to me on the, the other run I've done. Okay, dead, but 
that's just between us, right? Don't, don't go telling everybody about it. I'm ashamed of myself as it is. Uh, the other thing I've noticed, if, if, uh, if I, uh, if I stick Hashla down with, uh, with a Wither Horde, and then, and then I leave it just, just a touch longer, here's my wizards, I leave it just a touch longer, uh, the second Wither Horde shot benefits from the first Wither Horde shot weakening her, so, Literally most of the damage I'd done uh, on Hash Ladoon was just with Wither Horde. Right, so just gonna stick, break. I just want these knights, if you stay too close, now there is a little bit more of of the There is a little bit more of this cover I can go to the left. Just try. I can see it to start with now we have to there's a little bit more cover back here to the left what I'm trying to do you see there because she put her stuff here that is what I kept my super for because she put her uh who do you call it poison because she put her poison I was keeping my super because Titan Super, Titan Solar Super is really good for that. Because you pop it, you get that sunspot with Lowly Splendor, I get healing. So, you know, that, that's a get out of jail free card, really. So now we're looking for the second wizard. Now, Hash Ladoon kind of played me a little bit here. I've got special here, we're all good. Anywhere I tried to go, just for a second, Hash Ladoon would come and block my damage to that other wizard. Now, she's all the way up the back there. And Ashla Doom was like catching these. She was catching these shots like she was trying out for a goalkeeping position. So I just. Again, I've already said this. Wizards are the worst with their damage. So just. When you see a wizard giving it that. Giving it big. Uh, don't, don't step out and try and get a little shot because they, they've already got you in their sights. You see there. Sometimes with all this special here, sometimes it's you know, sometimes it's worth taking a little gamble with the Wither Horde, just trying to Kobe it from, from you know wherever. You see, I've, I've already hit, and I'll stick another one. <coughs> uh, when she puts her green slimy stuff on the floor, you don't want to be there because that's her marking that. Just toss the grenade, get, get good damage from the grenade, another Wither Horde. Because she she's marking that that area. I'll now put another Wither Horde on her. We really want her to shield up and go immune. There we go. Because when she goes immune, she'll go away. If you don't make her immune, she won't go away. She'll she can stand right right on top of you, really. So you see there, there's run stops. We're also gonna have a bunch of throw. So what I'm trying to do is wait for the there he is. I missed him with the first grenade. Got him there. Now, another thing it's worthwhile speaking about is as I've said, when you pull out your grenade launcher, you only get three seconds. <clears throat> see the cursed throw there coming in? Be careful with him. When, when when you reload, it's like it gives you... It, it, it. So here he comes again. Second one. Stopped him. Now, what, I'm, what I've done there is I've thrown my throne hammer because I have the thing set up on my... on my fragments that when I hit an enemy with my throne hammer, uh, I become radiant, right? So, just move here. I was kind of okay, even though I, I took a big hit. Cause I, so, the way Lorely works, again, I know you guys know this. So I hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm not. This isn't for the people that know it. This is for the people that maybe don't know. Lorely works that it will give you, I think, it's, I think now it's like tier 1 or tier 2 restoration. Uh, 
if you've got your class ability, right? So once you, so basically, when you get hit, when you get made critical, Lorley will put a sunspot underneath you. It comes over exploders. That's why I moved all the way over to the side, and so I could get a look because you can see the exploders. They're they're invisible, but it's like it's like you know. <laughs> It's like it's like the thrall thinking. It's like it's like hunters and crucible thinking that you can't see them when they go invisible. It's like I can. You're shimmering. Uh, yeah. So completely messed up with the thrall hammer. As long as you've got your class ability, Lorley will keep giving you healing, right? So I've got a thing on where, you know, when I use my class ability, as long as as long as I get a hit with my 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 uh, thrown hammer, it gives me it makes me radiant, which is twenty five percent more damage. I think. I'm just gonna move over here, see what's going on. Uh, but the other thing is because I've got no I'll pop my super that should finish up. Because I've got 100% resilience, I get my class ability back as fast as I can. There we go. That's the rest. That is the end of that. So, Lorley's really good for staying alive. I, I, what I tend to do is I stay in that cover until I need to come out, basically. So, be mindful of the thrall. The thrall are really your only real issue there. And if you do get hit and you, you, you know, it hurts. Just move back away there a bit, okay? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the run, and I will see you guys in the next video.